Hey everybody, welcome back. This is The Gerbil, and I'm just going to show uh, four or so excerpts of my GAC on the 23rd, mostly just because of time constraints, but uh, caveat I did lose, but it was a really exciting one and some teams I'd never actually seen before. I know they're quite common in the Kyber 1, so let's jump into this and see how this goes. Uh, the first one here is Emperor Palpatine with um, Mara Jade, and Starkiller. Uh, I have actually, it's only my second time to battle, maybe first time to battle Starkiller, and I was really confused by Kenobi and Visa's Mar being in there, and I'm like, what on earth is going on here? So I had to go and read Starkiller's kit, and it was a whole bunch of muddy blah 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 that I just didn't really understand, because these, ki these kits are getting rather lengthy with a lot of abilities. I mean, it's not like Admiral Akbar leadership Rebels game plus 20 speed or something. It's like, okay, I got it. Um, and then I jumped over to swgoh.gg, looked at the counters, and I saw that pretty much the only thing that is consistent against Emperor Palpatine, Mara, Kenobi, Visas, and Starkiller is Jedi Master Kenobi. And I was like, what? Uh, after that, the next one had like a 75% win rate, which is like a one in four. And I mean, one of four loss. And I'm like, oh, snap a ruse. And I keep going down because I didn't have that one. Uh, and then I saw Imperial Troopers was there and I was like, oh, I just I just don't know about that. I'm not comfortable with Imperial Troopers versus this. Um, then I saw Sith Eternal by himself with Wat Tambor and it only had a 62% win rate. And I was like, okay, well, that's my best option. And we're gonna throw in some, some throwaway Sith just to prolong the battle. And it's gonna, I think, it, I, mm, I don't know if I made mistakes or anything here. I think I did the best I can. Um, this was a really exciting battle, but there is one mistake. In the beginning, you're forced to link with Kenobi because he's taunting. After that, I linked with Starkiller. I should have probably linked with Mara Jade because she seems to be taking a lot more turns. Um, and so because of that, Oh, here it comes, here it comes. Ah! Ooh, I survived. Nice. Um, after, yeah, uh, <laughs> the the slower units are going to act less, which is going to give you the less charge towards your ultimate. So probably should have linked with Mara because she's a lot faster than Starkiller, I think. At least she took four turns than he did. Um, but anyway, yeah, so we survived the Death Star draw. Hoorahs. First time I've seen that in live in gameplay. And um, then I got my ultimate off, and once that happened, eh, it was done. It's over. Game over. Goodbye. Uh, Mara and Palpatine by themselves have no chance. So, ha 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 ha. So, in this, in this GAC, I have to win. Oh, yes, yeah, snap. There's the prerequisite internet snafu. Oh, my God. I'm so tired of this game's poor network, like, problems. It's consistent. I think 12 times today it asked me to log into somebody else's account. It, I really hope CG fixes that. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? Man, I just don't even know. All right, Akbar. Akbar versus Dasharu. Um, I know this is a really tricky team I'm up against, but I thought, okay, we start off with tenacity up, so this will be no problem. Crap, right there, right there. That five seconds in, I knew I probably lost. Um, because the days, actually, the, the rest of those, I don't care about, but the days alone is what's going to kill us. And L3 is so pervasive with that taunt. Um, another problem in this situation is that, like, I'm not sticking a, a buff immunity from Rolo, and I'm not, not entirely sure why. At some point, we just start killing L3, um, over and over again, or maybe that's in the, the, the cleanup match, but um, I persisted with this forever thinking we, we're gonna put out enough damage, we've got a turn meter advantage, we can get through Vandor and we'll have this. And well, it just it turned out no. Uh, ironically, after Rolo dies, I do a whole lot better. See right there, Akbar almost bit the dust. I'm just not really making any headway on this team, even though two of those characters are like tier 12 or something. We're just not making any headway. Now that Rolo's gone, though, watch the difference here. Um, we start, the turn meter train just takes off right here. 
uh, we, we are already dominating a whole lot more. Look at this. Look how many turns we've gone back to back without Rolo. Um, and, and there goes L3 and L3 stunned. And we're going to pop L3 again. And we're going to pop L3 again. See, this team apparently, I think even in 5v5, I think Akbar is not meant to be with two or four other rebels. Um, I'm going to start running this as a quartet, maybe even a, a, a trio. Because look at this. Since Rolo died, we're back up to full health. We have total board domination. The problem is we just can't we can't lay down L3 without the auto taunt. See, every time she stands up, she's taunting again. And I'm just like, what the heck? The trick is we got to L3 has to take a turn, lose a taunt, and we're just killing L3 too quick. So we end up timing out. And I just I just screw it. Let's just leave, right? <laughs> That, that was a frustrating experience. So then I'm like, okay, Dash, what, what's going to beat Dash? Well, we got to get out ahead of Dash. If you don't get ahead of Dash, that's where you lose. So troopers, I'm going to get ahead of Dash. Here you go. Bye-bye turn meter and screw you, Dash. Now the problem is, and I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this a little bit, that troopers are primarily a focus fire team. We do have some AoEs on... on four of those characters, ironically, even though I just said that. But the bulk of their damage comes from their basics and the assists that they get on that and the stacking damage. However, eventually their AoEs from Veers and Pia, which are actually not that strong, uh, eventually they will ramp up because of the, you know, the thing that the troopers do and that damage will escalate and we'll be able to get rid of Vandor just through the AoEs. We don't, we don't even have to attack Vandor. We're just going to clear the whole board slowly, which is why we got this on pass forward. And I probably should have done this the first time. If it, this is the only battle I dropped this GAC. That, that's actually, that's not entirely true. I dropped the ship battle, but I also didn't care at that point. I played sloppy and I, and I think I, I don't know if I would have lost anyway, but I'm going to just take the ownership of saying I lost by being bad. Um, I I stopped caring after I lost with Akbar because my opponent full cleared me and didn't drop any battles like 1831 banners they did awesome kudos to my opponent I, you you did amazing if you watch this and so I knew as soon as Akbar died I was like that that's game that I lose this so when I got to the ships I just didn't really care and I just kind of mashed buttons and tried to get through it quickly and I and my rebels lost to a five-star executor which is I'd say I have about a 70 80 percent chance of winning that one oh inquisitors if you all have not seen Zareth prevails recent video about inquisitors you really should go watch it he is echoing he is saying uh, in much more detail what I've been saying for a while about Inquisitors is that one um, it is yet to be determined how good Grand Inquisitor will actually be with the squad and I think and he agrees it will be a lot better than most people believe there is a lot of anger in the community and a lot of people who are upset with things that they're venting their frustrations at the Inquisitors who are without Grand Inquisitor I will agree not a good squad they're just weak overall i mean they, they have almost no damage output but grand inquisitor's kit is actually a lot better than most people are giving it credit and a couple of people are now able to consistently beat gas and um jedi knight luke without any problem now and i think that with more time and proper modding and team uh speeds and things i think that the squad will be a whole lot better now there's a bunch of anger of course that that it seems like they will not be able to beat jedi master kenobi with cat and it's like as zareth has said in his video and as i've been saying for a while it's like did we really want that did we really want one journey guide character with four marquees to be able to beat the number one meta kenobi with his lifter character cat who's only available now in proving grounds thus incredibly hard to get and the answer has to be no, of course not. We don't want such readily accessible characters to be so easy or to be able to defeat the in-game characters. 
that that's not healthy for the game. It really isn't. It's not healthy for like the the, the longevity of it. And then, as Zareth points out, if you go back and you read what CG has said over and over again, they never said Kenobi, and they never mentioned Cat until the release of Grand Inquisitor, and they never said it would actually be able to beat it. They said that Grand Inquisitor and Inquisitors would be able to challenge them in Territory Wars. And in Territory Wars, of course, we're going to have uh, two or three Omegas on the Grand Inquisitor that nobody can test right now. So I think people need to just kind of calm down, chill, and let the peoples out there with the Relic 8 and 9 Inquisitors play and find out. But you know, I think it will consistently be Jedi Master Luke. I do. Jedi Master Luke. And I think it will pretty easily beat Jedi uh, Master Kenobi without Cap. And I think it is a highly viable chance of beating Kenobi with Cap. I could be totally nuts, but I think it will happen in time. Not, not like consistently, not super easily, but I think it will happen. All right, final battle I'm going to showcase here. Wampa versus Mon Mothma, which I've never done this before. Surely there's a lot of these vids out there, but this got really stressful because... I, watch this. I'm one shot killing Cara Dune now every single turn. And yet she's not staying down because she has potency. And if she dies with potency, she revives with potency. And if she dies with, with a buff, she revives. So I'm like, I'm like, am I going to time out because of this? Um, and it gets really darn close. I had to go to SWGOH and do some reading, look at the kits, and I couldn't figure out how to get this done. So I just put it on auto and just kind of, you know, cross my fingers and hope for the best. Turns out, somehow we win. I think it's when we pop Mon Mothma with the AoE attack that we finally win, and whoa, whatever, but stressful. Anyway, guys and girls, thanks so much for watching. Hit a like and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow with my fifth episode of The Galaxy Last Week. All right, see y'all later. Bye-bye.